So in today's episode of Storytellers, we're at the Fox and Hound Canine Retreat outside of Sarnia, Ontario. I sit down with the owner, Katie Chapman, who talks about her background in the industry, her passion for this industry, and how she built this incredible facility. Hope you enjoy. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good, how are you? Good, good. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for letting us come out to your beautiful facility you have out here. Thank you. So let's start at the top as we always do and tell us your story. Oh, well, I guess my story uh, started when I was little. My dad had dogs when I was small. So uh, I grew up doing dog shows oh, and cool. um, running dogs is mainly what he did. By dog shows, I mean dog trials. Um, so he has hunting dogs. Okay. And uh, so I kind of grew up in a sport world yep. per se, uh, considering they're foxhounds and they're bred to run, and okay. that's what he did with them. There yeah. you go. So that's where the name come from. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yeah, cool. it's the fox and hound because of him. Yeah. So uh, tell us about, I guess, your facility and, and what you do here. Well, I've worked in quite a few facilities in the past, and we just wanted to create something a little bit different. It's, it's mainly an open concept facility, so dogs that stay with us are required to be dog social. Okay. So it's sort of a social atmosphere for the dogs. Cool. Mm -hmm. And when did this one open? And I guess, did you do anything before this or is this your first? No, I had a really small little grooming shop that I started when I was uh, 19. Oh, so cool. I was proud of it, but it, it, yeah. it was pretty little, yeah. but uh, it got me going. Cool. And uh, then I started in pet food not long after that. So I've been in the pet industry. Um, before opening to the, uh, this. And when did this place open then? This opened in 2015. And how did you know this was the next step for you from going from grooming to dog food to something of this nature? Well, when I was in pet food, I worked on the road. Um, so I guess my life changed when I had two kids. Yeah. So I have two little ones and being on the road wasn't gonna be an option. Cool. So I needed to find something that I could do working from home. Yeah. Um, and my husband and I decided that we would open something like this and Cool. Yeah. And you went big. <laughs> a little bit. We weren't expecting to go this big. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So I guess what have been the challenges that you've seen over the time of, of taking on something like this and um, starting something like this? Probably the growing pains. Yeah. We were intentionally expecting it to be sort of smaller, um, <laughs> <laughs> but utilizing a really big barn. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we just grew and grew to the point where all of a sudden I was employing people and I'd never employed people before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, setting up structure and whatnot. Cool. But here we are, we're, um, I would say last year was probably our, our biggest year in a sense of uh, a learning curve when it yep. came down to um, putting things together. Cool. Talk about the size of this. Like how many dogs would you have here in any given day? It's pretty average for us to have well over a hundred dogs. Oh. We have a pretty busy grooming salon and when uh, all our groomers are here, they groom about 16 dogs a day. Wow. And uh, we have a little area with little dogs um, that's separate from the big dogs, which is sort of new. Yep. And then we have a big dog area where their big suites are. And then we have this new room where we're sitting, cool. which is designated to our puppies. Awesome. Yeah. So what other services do you offer here then? So we sell quite a, f quite a bit of dog food. Yep. Um, so we sell the dog food, we do the grooming. The doggy daycare is popular and then our boarding. So you said you were on the road selling dog food, did that? allow you to kind of learn what you were going to build and kind of help build that vision of what you're after? I, I could say that that contributed to a lot. You, know, you see the good, the bad, and the ugly, yeah, I'm sure, you right? Do. Yeah. So I visited mainly um, retailers across Ontario okay. and a lot of traveling came with that job too, which was pretty cool. cool. Um, I was in my early 20s when I started that. So it's, yeah. it's fun traveling when you're so young yeah, that's and right. naive. Yep. <laughs> you Not so many a, responsibilities. Yeah, <laughs> yep, you see a lot and have to learn fast. But yeah, when it comes down to the backbone of things nutritionally, um, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful I had that job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I worked with a lot of breeders, um, veterinarians, and uh, met a lot of really fantastic people cool. that I still uh, talk to to this day that have a lot to do with, uh, you know, role models, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Was there an, a moment or an experience along that road that kind of made it concrete for you that this is what I wanted to do, this was gonna be the next step? I think that concrete step happened to me when I was small. Yeah? Yeah, I think the pet food was just a stepping stone for me until I knew, um, I knew that I would be opening a business. Uh, as a kid, I always wanted a kennel. Yep. Uh, we don't use the K word here, <laughs> kennel. It's a swear um, word, we, yep. Yeah, it's sort of a swear <laughs> word in our, in our uh, fox and hound 
uh, theory. Yep. So, um, but I did know that I was going to own something like this someday, cool. or at least I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How important is passion when you're starting to kind of take that leap and, you know, like, like make that decision to kind of jump in with two feet? Yeah. So I think the pet industry in general is a very passionate industry. Yeah. Typically we're dealing with pet owners who love their dogs more or the same as a yeah. human child. And uh, therefore the theories of everything is so passionate behind, you know, the dog bed they pick out yeah. to the collar they pick out to the name. I that's mean, right. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot that goes into this industry that's passion. But the part that is funny about the pet industry is that passion plays such a strong role that the business part of it is sort of behind passion. So, so passion so, first, business second. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And that's been um, probably a learning curve for me yeah. to, to try to put my business hat on versus my passionate hat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So talk about a little bit of, about the, the things you've learned in the five years. What are some of the biggest, I guess, things you didn't expect when you got into something like this? Naturally, I don't think I'm a team player, <laughs> um, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's been my struggle is trying to be a boss. I'm terrible at that. Can anybody because... truly live up to your expectations? Oh yeah. yeah, they all can. Good, good. Everyone surpasses it. Oh. It's me that doesn't live up to their expectations. How I so? think, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, when you have a boss, you expect like direction and everything. Yep. And up until recently, I mean, we've grown so fast that I felt like I was always left behind and, yeah, you know, yeah. my employees are trying to say, what do we do here? And I'm like, oh, I don't know yet. You know, yeah. well, we're figuring it out. Yep. But just recently, thank heavens for a manager. We finally have a manager yeah. in place and that, you know, that was pretty well a three-year process to get that oh, yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Um, so things have really started to uh, become, a, you know, the pieces are getting put together Structured now. and process yeah. oriented. We're yeah, definitely yeah. more structured than even we were six months ago. Yep. So, um, which I think has been really great for everyone working here. Yeah. Because now they can come to work with expectations. That's great, and yeah. That was our biggest growing yeah. pain was trying to put together structure because never ever did I expect us to be this busy. That's right. And this the model that you've created, is it something that is out there in the industry? Or you're kind of blazing um, a new trail with kind of how you're doing so, things? So, yes and no. Um, it's a little bit unique to Ontario. Okay. We, we offer dogs what they require environmentally. Okay. So many doggy daycares are inside only, but we're very fortunate that we have the space outside cool. to create an abundance of, of play area for yep. them because dogs do require uh, space. Yeah. And that's the trick to keeping our play groups uh, calm and structured yeah, is yeah. that the dogs do have the space so that they're not feeling confined because that's when you do find the behavioral issues. Burn off some of that energy, yeah. Yeah. So then as you're growing, you really, did you have a model that you could kind of reflect or is it kind of a um, doing your own thing? Well, it's mainly a reflection of what I knew as a kid with the dogs. Oh, yeah. You know, so a lot of it is just your basic foundations of, of what you know dogs need as a species. Yep. We humanize dogs to a great, a great uh, level. Yeah. So quite often, a lot of it is is um, you know teaching our dog owners to understand the way a dog thinks versus the way we think they think yeah. as humans. Yep. Um, I'm guilty of it. I love it when my dogs have pink toenails, you know, they're, uh, they wear clothes, yeah, yeah. you know, I like to think that they think like me, but I mean, I know that they don't, yeah, yeah. you know, um, however, it's a matter of, of respecting a dog as a canine species versus believing that they're human. True. So now that you have a manager in place, I guess, how does your day to day differ today than it did say a year ago? I love having help. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I've let go a little bit. Um, I, I think, I think it's a more relaxed atmosphere. Yep. I tend to come in like a crazy Jack Russell and I'm, I, I feel your pain. There. Yeah. I, I tend to come in and I'm wild when I show up. Um, and that's probably the part I dislike about myself the most yeah. is, is, um, that reactiveness that I have. Yeah. However, I, I've learned to be calmer. Yeah. And I'm able to uh, just kind of let Kelly run the show. Cool. Yeah. How did you kind of learn to let go a little bit? And... Well, I had to. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's, I, I just had to. It, yeah, was, yeah. it was getting to a breaking point. 
Um, you know, I, I feel that I was letting people down in the barn when, you know, I'd come in and act like that. Yeah. Well, it, it's, been, it's been really rewarding just allocating more, more, more tasks and putting in structure into yeah. place. It makes everybody just feel happier. What tips or tricks do you use to stay focused and productive now with, you know, when dealing with the growth that you've been under and, and the success you've had with this place? My tip is to look at the great, the big, the big picture, yeah. um, not, you know, really focus on the big picture here about a decision that I'm making or something that I need to do to make it better long term. Sure. That's definitely my, my tip to staying focused is to look at the big picture. Do you take time to make like long term goals and basically envision that line of success and what that looks like for you? I think we have been better now. Yeah. Um, now that we've sort of overcome, um, you know, a rocky beginning of, of the growing pains, I feel like we're getting better at structuring that idea better yeah. and, and coming, coming to a plan to execute to make, us, to make us function better and to maintain what we've established. Cool. Talk about some of the growing pains. You mentioned that a few times. What were some of the most memorable ones that stood out in terms of... Oh, in the beginning, um, like this has nothing to do with yeah, it's fine. much, but yeah. oh my gosh. When we started, our arena was a dirt floor, uh, wood shavings to be exact, okay. mixed yep. in with horse manure. Yep. And we, <laughs> we would let the dogs <laughs> run wild, totally wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd have to bath them all before they went home. <laughs> and you know, getting all the wood chips out of everyone's dog hair was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, just little funny, ridiculous things like that, really. Yeah. Um, you know, where to put the dog poo. What, you know, what to do with the dog yeah, poo. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got a mountain of it somewhere Oh my goodness, the like, yeah, <laughs> like investing in a bleach company. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mainly the growing pains um, is just learning to run a business. Yeah. That, was, that was a struggle for me, like a real struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, weren't, it wasn't the dogs. The dogs are second nature to me, yeah, yeah. so that was easy, um, caring for the dogs. But putting in protocols and rules and uh, a day-to-day -day schedule, yeah, yeah, that was the growing pain. How important was culture along that, that whole train? Big deal. Yeah. Yeah, big deal. I've attended some conferences about culture and uh, you know, reached out to some professionals yeah. for that. Yep. So that's been really great. That was, I wish I had done that two years ago. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's um, actually Theo had, had tasked me to write an article on culture about mm -hmm. six months ago. And yeah. I was kind of like you with our business was just head down running as fast as we possibly mm -hmm. could. And I kind of assumed things were doing, it, yeah. doing what they need to do in the background until you take mm -hmm. a second to just kind of stop and take mm -hmm. a breath and see what's going on. And yeah. it, that really hit home to me is how important that is and how fast it can get away from you if you're not careful. Oh, right? it's, it's scary. It and is, that's, yeah. And that's what I mean when I say that I let people down. Yeah. It was, it was that we hadn't created a culture, um, you know, something that everyone could work towards yeah. and work together. And, you know, the, some people were carrying the workload of others. And, and this is kind yeah. of a unique thing because that mm -hmm. culture is more important, I th would think, here than anywhere, too, because of the, the need to have the same passion as you for mm -hmm. the animals and for the... Well, it's sort of like, I mean, I know not a lot of environments are team-based, but here you're really depending on one another, yeah. you know, and if one falls, then, you know, it, it, it creates a chain reaction yeah. when it comes to the handlers. So you have to, with the handlers that we have here, they all have to rely on one another. Yeah. And if they can't rely on one another, then Start they can't work together yeah, yeah. because, you know, it's a physically demanding job. For sure. It potentially could be dangerous because we are dealing with dogs yeah, and yeah. things happen. Yeah. Um, an accident can happen on a switch. Yeah, that's right. So um, putting all those things and having a culture where everyone feels good about each other yeah. um, is so important. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. How important is work-life balance? I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> yeah. You're not alone. Um, no. I, yeah. I, I like to call it work-life harmony. It was a term uh -huh. I just read about because yeah. I don't know if you could really balance one out with the other. But. I'm, I'm not sure. So I keep looking back to the way I grew up and I grew up on a farm. Yep. So, you know, you've got a parent that's always in the barn. You can't yeah. usually go away on holidays. Yep. You know, you're home because you've got livestock to tend to. Um, you have to be it's in the barn. It's a different way of life. It's yeah. a different way yep. of life. Yep. And that's the way I keep trying to tell myself that it'll be okay. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you know, we can't leave the property. We can't, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got dog slash livestock yep. essentially. Yep. Um, not really, but you yeah, see what same I'm idea. Yep. This, the same idea. And I had a great childhood. So I keep saying, yeah. okay, this is the way it's going to be. That's right. You know, we yep. can't, we probably won't be able to, you know, the family that plays hockey or yep. uh, team sports because it's hard to get away yep. and travel and things like that. But 
How old are your kids now? Um, Kylie is seven and Wylan is six. So what do they think about living on the farm with the dogs? Ugh. I'm not sure what they think. <laughs> they, they know that I'm busy a lot yeah. and that, you know, that, that hurts a little. Yeah. Um, it hurts a little knowing that they consider me too busy and I don't ever want them to think I'm too busy yep. for them, yep. you know? And, um, Jake, my husband, he's, he's, he's the king of balance. So he's got it all figured out. Yeah. I just wish I could do what he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, an interesting question that I've, you know, that's come up in every one of these, media, these uh, storytellers things we've done. And I agree with you though. I don't know how easy it is to, it's in theory, yeah, mm -hmm. we can shut off, but are mm -hmm. you really actually shut off? Like even yeah. when you're gone, I'm sure with you, you're always got no, something spinning you're around not, in there. You know, yeah. and uh, phones are terrible. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those things got to go, yeah. but it's, it's interesting having the property or I'm sorry, the business on your property. Yeah. Um, cause uh, you, really, you know, it doesn't end. You can't disconnect. You yeah. can't disconnect, yeah. but people don't stop coming, Yeah. you know, and I understand they, you know, they love their dog yeah, and they yeah. want to pick their dog up any time of the day. And yeah. I wish I could, I wish I could say, yes, come in here at 11 o'clock yeah. at night. No problem. You know, yeah. but I can't, you I mean, I, I have to have an off yeah. and uh, I need them to trust that, you know, we have employees here looking after their dogs, yeah. even, even when we're closed, yeah, that's it right. doesn't mean we're not here with the dogs. Yeah. It just means that we're closed to the public coming yeah. on the property. Yeah. So with the busyness, mm -hmm. have you ever experienced burnout? I have, <laughs> um, I, probably three times. Yep. Yeah. That seems to be the magic number when I yeah, talk to people. Yeah, is it? Been, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think by the third time you're like, holy crap, I gotta get my act yeah, in here, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome? How do you try to prevent it moving forward now? Um, well, this last time I reached out to a consulting firm. Oh yeah? Yeah, so yep. um, it was all by fate that yep. I met these people at another doggy daycare actually in Detroit and I met uh, their trainer and their trainer kind of also consults the staff yep. and puts together a culture for them. Oh, cool. So it, it was awesome. I, I'm so, I feel so refreshed now that I yeah. met these people. Um, so I'm excited for that. So it sounds like mentors or consultants have played a big part in this. Yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. How important do you think that is? And how, like, I talk to business owners every day that maybe get a little too proud to ask for help. I myself, I've talked oh, to no. a thousand and one. No. I have to learn something every day from business owners in terms of how we can be more efficient or how to do things yeah. a little bit differently. But yeah. um, um, what's your take on that? Oh, you have to ask for help. Yeah. If you don't ask for help, then you've stopped learning. That's right. No, it's, it's so important to me. Um, I idolize so many, so many dog people yeah. in the, you know, in all, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm usually really intrigued by what they have to say. Um, there's a great connection or a little network among doggy daycare owners yeah. and it's a Facebook page yep. and just because it's such a unique yep. business, it's really not that cookie cutter because everyone's different with That's the way right. they operate, but they have a conference now and it's just, it's put on by doggy daycare owners yeah, yeah. and for it's for daycare. doggy daycare owners. Yeah, cool. And, uh, I just came back from one actually, yeah. and there was 240 other doggy daycare wow. owners there. All over North America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. The furthest one had it, uh, traveled from Alaska. So wow. they really, I think they're all seeking help. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's mainly because you know, most of us offer the boarding part. Yep. Boarding wouldn't be so tough if all the dogs went home at night, but yeah. because they're all here, it's a 24 hour With thing. With unique needs and unique they everything. They all have yeah. unique needs yeah. yep. and trying to meet that and, you know, not disappoint people is difficult yeah. because again, passion is playing a huge role. Sure. Yep. Not only passion in us as the people running the show, yep. but the passion that comes with every single dog owner through the door. I mean, you have all these stories and why this dog is different than that dog. Right. And my dog likes to sleep this way, but my dog <laughs> likes to sleep that way. Yeah. And you know, all these people that are trusting us with their kids essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in my opinion, there's a lot of pressure there to make sure that For they're sure. all happy. Yeah. yeah. So with this owner's group bounce ideas, is it kind of a, yeah. Uh, therapy session sometimes. It's, it's more so therapy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people vent on there and look for help and look for guidance. Well, a lot, I would assume I'm in some, some similar groups like that validation. Yep. Just, you know, proof that, or, you know, that reassurance that you're not screwing things up. You're yeah. doing things fine. Just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything that keeps you up at night? Uh, every, every night. <laughs> Lots of things. I mean, 
dogs, uh, owners, employees, uh, business, my personal life, chaos, business, everything, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, keeps yeah. you up at night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you define success? What's your picture of it? I think, I think being happy is your success. What does that look like? People's definition of happy kind of differs. I'm yeah. happy when I'm working. I'm, that's it. So. Well, that's true. I'm happy when I'm working too. I, I think it's happy. It's, yeah. you know, I have, I, I'm successful because I have a husband that lets me play with 200 dogs a day. <laughs> um, he lets me have six dogs in the house. Yeah. We have a cat in the house now. And I you don't mean, look too thrilled about that. Well, I just can't believe I have so many animals in my house, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I have two kids that are extremely intelligent yeah. and sweet and they love the dogs. They're not allergic to dogs, thank That's, God. Yeah. When I was pregnant, I was terrified I would have oh, kids yeah, that are allergic to dogs. Yeah. yeah. But he started dating me when I had six Jack Russells. So you so. know he's getting into. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm shocked he stuck around. Yeah. So it sounds like you've achieved success when you talk about, Yeah, you I, know, I would, I would yeah. totally think yeah. that. Cool. Oh, yeah. In your opinion, as an entrepreneur in this industry or any industry, what do you think are the most important skills you need to be successful? The ability to communicate with others. Yep. Um, compassion. Organization. Yeah. Working on that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just be compassionate, you know, just be nice. What do you think about the concept of follow your passion when you're getting into entrepreneurship? Do you think that it's possible for somebody to be successful if they're really, truly passionate about the industry they're in? Or do you think it may potentially be a bit of a recipe for disaster? It can be both. Yeah. I think you have to do your homework, you know, and, and that's... Uh, that's just it. When I think back, I mean, my whole lifetime was my homework for this. Yeah. You know, it, but it. Yeah. that's that's not normal. I mean, I don't know what normal is, but <laughs> it's probably not normal to grow up with 30 dogs yeah. and then do something with that. This you know what line. I mean? Yeah. It was, was yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was it was supposed I mean, I wouldn't have a career or a job. <laughs> I'd be unemployable if I couldn't work with dogs. So, yeah. Has there been a moment that stands out as being kind of that, that moment in time throughout the business where you feel like you've made it or a defining moment within the, the business so far or your career in general? I probably felt that way when I worked uh, in pet food. I really liked that. Yeah. Um, I really liked that job and I felt, uh, I felt good and it was probably, probably because there was an end to it. You know, like every day there oh, okay. was an end to it. Yeah. But with this, when we moved here, uh, it was the first day we drove in and I thought, oh my God, what did we do? <laughs> and I had a carbon monoxide alarm going off in my car because I took it from our old house yeah. as we're moving here. I had all my dogs running rampant in my car and I'm holding this and I'm thinking, this is pure chaos <laughs> and like total chaos. And uh, it hasn't stopped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, that was that was an interesting key. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest lesson you had to learn along the way? The lesson came with uh, all of a sudden being a boss. Was yeah. it the day you hired your first employee or when you realized that you've built this thing, this living organism? That... It's hard hiring people. Yeah. It is. You know, yep. I, don't, I don't necessarily like that responsibility of, of the business. What do you look for when you're hiring somebody? Well, um, a leader. You know, when, when we work in sort of an atmosphere with all of these dogs, yep. the dogs tend to gravitate the best towards people that can give them the direction. Yep. Dogs are always looking to be cued or, you know, have their behavior reinforced. If it's a good one, they yep. want to know that they did something right. Sort of like people. Yeah, that's right. So um, yep. they're always looking for direction. And if you're a leader, then you can probably work in a scenario like this yeah. because uh, working so with So you're looking dogs. for a team of leaders. Basically. Yeah, that's not an easy feat So <laughs> No, it's not. And yeah. if, uh, so basically um, what we've sort of gotten on, what we do is I don't even interview people anymore. I was terrible at it yeah. anyway. But um, Kelly does a little bit of interviewing, but then we allow the girls to, t to pick their oh, team. Cool. So we'll have um, a trial day come in, work with the playgroup, awesome. work with the employees. Yep. And at the end of the day, they gave, they give me a summary of what they liked, what they didn't. They want to have that handler back. Cool. So, yeah. So you kind of empower the team to make the decision, which is, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. So if they make the, the wrong decision, it's, it's on not them. on me. Yeah. 
pass the buck. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, but that's what we've gotten in the habit of doing. Yeah. And so far that's worked out really well. Cool. Are there any opportunities along your career path that you wish you would have taken advantage of or jumped on? Not yet. Not yet? No. Yeah. Um, there's opportunities that I want to jump on. Yeah. It just hasn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. But yeah. Talk about relationships and your strategy on and how important relationships are with your employees, with your customers, with everybody in between. It's very important. Um, again, you're playing with someone's family member. Yep. So, you know, if the relationship is, um, you know, the relationship needs to be there in order to trust each other. Yep. Because, you know, I'm trusting now, there's obviously too many dogs for me to physically look after yep. on my own. So I need to trust that, you know, so-and-so has recognized that, yeah, a dog uh, is not doing well. Yep. A dog is uncomfortable. This dog needs medication. I'm trusting you to make sure that it's getting done. Yep. You know, things like that um, is very important in what we do, we yeah. do here. Because we're, we're, we're dealing with living animals, so. Yeah, and like you said a few times, it's a family member you're working with here. Mm -hmm. Much like a daycare, much like mm -hmm. anything else, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, you have to put essentially all my trust on them because, you know, I'm, I'm carrying the whole liability, yeah. you know, for yeah. every, every little mistake that is possibly made. Which mistakes happen. That's part mistakes of the, happen, that's it. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's difficult, uh, when, when there's a lot of backlash that comes with a mistake, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, because, you know, something didn't happen that was supposed to happen with somebody's dog and, you know, then you have an upset owner or, you know, an incident happened like that would be the same as a child at school with a scraped knee, yep. but a dog has a scrape on it. But now, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's yep. a whole yep. thing and it can come with a big cost. And then, yeah, even the, the relationship with the, like your example there, a kid falling and scraping his knee, one parent may make a lot bigger deal of that than the next one. So kind of Yeah, it, it varies. Yeah, it's the same yeah. way. I mean, oh my goodness. Like we have the best dog owners. So awesome. by no means am I talking about any of them. But you know it, the incident, or the occasion happened For sure. where yeah. where we can't please someone. Yep. You know, that's or business, or we right? have yeah. a really unfortunate incident with a dog. Yep. Um, that's you know been really terrible too. Yep. And because we love these dogs, you know, it comes down to yeah. not only is the owner upset, but we're upset yeah. about something with a dog. Yep. You know, and oh, there's something called uh, compassion stress. It's a common term used in the veterinarian field where, yep. you know, the staff are carrying so much compassion and it's weighing them down. I can see that. And yeah. we, we all have the same issues here, Yeah. you know, where, uh, you know, we might have a terminally ill dog yep. that we know is sick yep. and, but everyone's fallen in love with it. Yeah, so yeah. when it happens, you know, when the time comes where that dog loses its battle, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so sad. Yeah, everyone's no so sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can definitely see the passion that you have for this uh, industry. It's cool. crazy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talked about what you look for in an employee, um, the level of leader and compassion they need to have. What sort of strategies do you implement to kind of keep them motivated and keep them passionate about this? Well, naturally, they usually come here looking for a job with dogs yep. because they love their dogs and they want to do something with it. Luckily and lately, the majority of our employees or like the, the biggest part of the team right now are all trainers themselves. Oh yeah. Or in a sense, they really enjoy um, training their own dogs. So we allow the employees to participate in all of our own instructions that we have here going on cool. and <laughs> which results in them staying here after hours oh, yeah. because they're you know, doing a class with their own with dog. Their own dog. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. you know, they wrap their, their workshop up or their work shift up here yep. and then they go and, you know, they have their dog and they go and do three hours of classes a night. Cool. It's crazy. They're hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, I think, you know, stroking that, what they love, you know, they can totally, um, they participate of, in everything, what they want to yeah. do with their own dogs, but we support that. So they mix work and play into yeah. one spot, right? Yeah. yeah. Like um, the majority of the time they all bring their dogs to work with them. Yeah. So some employees have three to four dogs. Wow. So, you know, yeah. in addition to our regular daycare yeah, dogs, yeah, we also yeah. have, oh my gosh, upwards of like 20 staff dogs here yeah. any given day. Have any clients turned into employees? Yeah, that has happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I can uh, see that. Yeah. yeah. On yeah. more than one occasion. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about, we talked about mentors and uh, coaches and stuff. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Off hand? 
I've gotten a lot. Yeah. Uh, not one piece that sticks out in my mind, but uh, I have a, a mentor in Sarnia and uh, she's my veterinarian. Cool. And quite often when I have a problem or um, I don't exactly know how to handle a situation, yeah. you know, I've reached out to her and uh, I usually get very valuable uh, information. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What's your secret to achieving the success that you have here? My secret? Love what you do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what else I would have done with my life. So, <laughs> other than be a crazy dog lady. It was this or nothing. It, yeah, it was this or I was never going to have a paycheck ever again. Yeah. I still don't, but yeah. <laughs> I had that conversation with a business yeah. owner the other day. It's, whatever you do, don't sit down and figure out your hourly wage. Because it's a scary, it's scary It's a scary thing. one. Especially, you know, we're, we're still building. Yeah. I mean, we're... we're you're still five years. Yeah, you're still. Well, we're not even five. Yeah, we're just words. into yeah, our fifth yeah, year, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but every you know ounce of or every cent that we've uh, managed to make as a as an income has yeah. gone right back into building something more for Very the dogs. Nice yeah, that's awesome. You mentioned your vet there, your mentor in Sarnia. Is there any other kind of key people you turn to? Oh, my mom and my dad and my husband. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones that take the brunt of everything. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, he, yeah. the, the uh, psychologist on yeah, everything. They're yeah, they're the psychologist. Yeah. When it comes to a little bit of advice, I've got um, some great feedback from another doggy daycare in Detroit. Oh, cool. She's been, she's been cool to deal yeah. with too. Let's talk about what, what would be the most valuable piece of advice you could give somebody wanting to start out in this industry? Oh, prepare, prepare yourself. The turnover for people that open boarding facilities is is high yeah um the burnout is real i could see that yeah. is that why the where the turnover comes from or why the the turnover is definitely from the high demand it's a high demand job yeah. people you know people have high expectations and i love that you know 95 percent of the time we can deliver that yeah. um you know there's always um gonna be uh, or the 80 20 rule you yeah. know yeah. so yeah. um you know you can do your best and that's all you can do. That's right. But yeah. you know, when it comes down to um, this industry in particular, yeah, it's because it's so passionate. Yeah. You know, it's not business smart. It's it. The passion is just overtakes yeah. the whole thing. It never stops. It doesn't sound no. like. No. Yeah. No. Is there anything else you want to cover in this? Anything you think that would kind of add to people within the industry or people thinking about getting in the industry? It's evolving, so stay on top of it. Yeah. Um, Everything changes. Training techniques change. Uh, dog sports change. Nutrition changes. Uh, veterinarian medicine evolves. Um, and I think I think understanding all of that and being you know reach out to your vet clinics locally yeah. and learn what you can learn. Yeah, yeah. And don't be scared um, to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. you got to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. But um, and I, I think I think the other thing about the pet industry that is unfortunate is that. You know, businesses that are within the same, the same field tend to keep away from one yeah. another. And I think that we're all in it. Why not just all create the same level of care for the dogs yeah. and not, you know, try to outdo one another? Yeah. It, you know, you can all, you can all reap rewards from That's the right. same level of so care. There's a huge, huge demand. It's only going to get bigger in your industry, especially. Yeah, it yeah. is only, you know, the pet industry is growing. Yeah. Um, the pet care industry is growing. And, uh, you know, when you're already in it, yeah. you might as well just roll together yeah. and try to learn from one another. That's really. right. That's yeah. right. Are you a morning person or a night hawk? I'm both. Yeah? Yeah. How? How can you possibly um, be both? <laughs> because I think I live on adrenaline. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm always worried and concerned about something so I can achieve it in the early morning or I'm up at night trying to finish something yeah. that I've started. Yeah. I like early mornings, but I'm dead asleep by 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. No, so kids our, go to bed and I'm right behind them. We're, we're in this building until 11 o'clock easily. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. And yeah. then we reopen bright and early. Yeah. yeah. Do you prefer to read the news on your device or in the paper? In the paper. Paper? Yeah. What's your favorite social media platform? Probably, yeah, I don't know. Probably, I don't know how to use anyone or any of them other than <laughs> Which Facebook. Which one do you check more often? I check Facebook. Okay. So that's but right, yeah. that's, I don't, I don't understand Instagram. 
all the girls that work here yeah. have the Instagram account. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Snapchat, yeah. I don't even have that either. Yeah, but, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. City life or country living? Country living. I kind of assumed yeah. that one too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing that's on your bucket list? Oh, to go to the Westminster dog show. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was in New York for a training thing the day that that was going on. Oh, really? And my hotel was full of dogs. Is they there, had them yeah. all over the place. Yeah, I'd right? be in my glory. Yeah. I really, yeah, I really love that. I love the history of yeah, breeds yeah. and, yeah. Cool. Um, biggest pet peeve? No pun intended. And my biggest pet peeve is, is when someone's training a dog and they don't reward when they're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> number nine, number eight, dogs or cats? Well, yeah, that's a tough one. I think it's dogs. <laughs> Safe to say. Favorite food? Uh, pad Thai. And clean desk or messy one? Oh, it's very messy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Organized messy though? No. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Katie. We really appreciate your time on this. this your facility is incredible and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks. Same to you.